Once we have two points, we might want to calculate the distance between. So how can we do that? Well, let's have our two points. So I have one point here with the coordinates x1, y1, and I have another point here with coordinates x2, y2. And I'd like to travel from here to there. So what can I do? Well, the important thing to remember is that the coordinates tell us how to get to the point from the origin. So what I might do is I might navigate back to my starting point and then navigate out to the new location. Now, this isn't particularly efficient, but it is a good starting point because we know how to do that. So let's take a look at this. These coordinates here are starting point x1, y1. Uh, in order to get to this point, I had to have gone out horizontally, x1, and then up vertically, y1. I had to go out some distance, up some distance. So if I want to go back to the origin, I'm going to reverse those directions. I'm going to go down some distance, back some distance. So from that point, I'll go ahead and make those moves and I'll record the total distances so I can figure out what I did as a net displacement. So here I start at my point because I went up distance y1 to get back down. I'm going to go down distance y1 and I'll represent that by saying my distance is minus y1. Now I'm here, since I got out distance x1 to get to that point, I went out x1, I'm going to go back x1, and that'll take me right back to the origin. And that is a horizontal distance. Well, now I'm back at my starting point, so now I want to get over to here, and here I can just use the coordinates directly. So the coordinates tell me that to get to this point, I need to go horizontally, x2, and vertically, y2. So I'm at the origin, I'm going to go horizontally, x2, and I'm going to add that to my horizontal distance. So I've gone over x2, and so far I've traveled minus x1 plus x2, and now I'm going to travel vertically, distance y2, to get there, and so I'm going to add that vertical distance y2 to how far I've traveled. So that's going to be minus y1 plus y2. Now remember, the real question that we really wanted to know was how do I get from here to there. I'd rather not have to walk all the way back to the origin and then all the way back out to the point. I'd like to go the direct route. So let's see what I can do here. Well, the thing to notice here is that my horizontal distance, minus x1 plus x2, well, I can rearrange that to make it look a little bit neater. That's x2 minus x1. There's my horizontal distance. And my vertical distance, minus y1 plus y2. Again, I'll rearrange that to make it look a little neater. That's y2 minus y1. And so my vertical distance, y2 minus y1. My horizontal distance, x2 minus x1. And I can get to this point from this point by undergoing a vertical shift of this far and a horizontal shift of that far. Now, what about the actual distance between the two? Well, the thing to notice here is that that distance, that straight line distance, if I take into account this vertical and horizontal distance here, that vertical distance is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And what this means is we can then use the Pythagorean theorem. And I know the two sides, x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. This is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So I can use the Pythagorean theorem. And the square of the hypotenuse is the square of one side plus the square of the other side of the triangle. And I want to do that difficult algebraic step of solving for d. I'll take the square root of both sides. And this gives us a way of calculating the distance between two points. So, for example, let's say I have the point 3, 5, and the point 2, negative 3. Well, paper is cheap, so I'll go ahead and write down the distance formula. Then I'll substitute in the values that I have. So let's take a look at those values. I have x2, that's my second x-coordinate, that's 2. x1, that's my first x-coordinate, that's 3. y2. That's my second y-coordinate. That's negative 3. I'll substitute that in. y1, that's my first y-coordinate. That's 5. I'll substitute that in. 
And now I have a bunch of computations to perform. Parentheses say do the stuff inside first. 2 minus 3 squared. That's negative 1 squared. Minus 3 minus 5 squared. Negative 8 squared. The square root symbol is like a set of parentheses. It says do whatever's inside first. So I have squaring. I have adding. I've got to do the squaring first. Minus 1 squared is 1. Negative 8 squared is 64. The square root symbol, still a grouping symbol, still says do what's inside first. 1 plus 64 is 65. And now I'm going to take the square root of 65. And since 65 is not a perfect square, I'll just leave it in that form.